Meet Gateway, a 10 gigabit router that me and my friend started developing in March of 2024. And today I can finally show it to you. Well, the development kit version, which to be honest, is the best version of this device that will ever exist because we've literally thrown everything we could onto the PCB with zero price optimizations. Is it an overkill for a home router? Yes, but is it awesome? Absolutely. If you're new here, hi, my name is Tomasz and together with my partner Alyash, we came to the conclusion that the vast majority of routers out there suck for one reason or the other and decided to do something about it. And in today's video, I'd like to show you the results or consequences of this decision, our own router. Almost all 1000 units that are currently being manufactured have been pre-sold. I think we have about 10 to 15 slots left and I'm happy to say that as of this moment, it looks like we're going to hit our goals of being able to ship them sometime mid-December. So think of this video as an unboxing. Actually, you know what? <laughs> we don't have boxes yet. So I'll guess, I guess we'll call it a pre-boxing. <laughs> Let's start with the most, well, boring parts, which in my opinion are the power supplies and move forward from there, okay? I already mentioned them in one of my previous videos earlier this year, but there were a couple of unknowns at that point, but by now all these unknowns have been resolved. We're still using the same 65 watt GAN unit, but we asked the supplier for a better USB type C cable that will come with this PSU. And indeed they were able to swap the cheap plasticky version for this braided one that feels much more premium. We're also not huge fans of what most electronic manufacturers do these days. They just include a handful of plastic adapters for various sockets, which yes, makes it easier for them logistically, but in my opinion is an unnecessary waste of plastic. So we're going to do things a little differently. And no, we're not doing the Apple way of just not including the cables. What we'll do instead is you'll be able to pick the plug that you want in our web shop, uh, which is not yet up by the way, and we'll just ship you that one, right? Because of this approach, the final product box will have three compartments. One for the router, one for this white box with the actual power supply and the USB cable, and one for the cable that goes into your wall socket. I cannot show you the product box yet because we're waiting for the prototypes to be delivered, but don't expect anything fancy here, just your good old cardboard with plenty of padding to make sure that the routers survive any mishandling by the courier services. And while we're on the topic of packaging, we also decided to wrap each router in a soft bag, which to be honest, I don't even know what they're called. So I'll just put a photo on screen and I'm sure you'll recognize them because you've likely received other products before that were packaged this way. These bags cost like 60 cents each and we figured it makes sense to protect our routers from dust and cardboard particles that usually have the tendency to stick to plastic surfaces, right? And it will need protection, not because it's sensitive to dust, but because it looks just so damn fantastic that it would be a shame if it got dirty. Now, for those of you who have been following my journey for a while, you're probably wondering right now, wait, what? I thought the enclosure is going to be plastic. Well, I thought so too. But then we had countless meetings over the course of past two months with a number of injection molding companies and every single one of them said March 2026, give or take. As in March of 2026 is the fastest that we can get our enclosures, uh, enclosures manufactured. This, of course, stressed the shit out of me because we're planning the start of manufacturing of PCBs in a couple of weeks and I simply cannot afford to wait that long. So I mentioned this to a friend of mine that owns a CNC shop, which you've probably seen on this channel before, and he said, I got you, mate. And he offered me a really good price on these, but what's even more important, a timeline that, well, works for us. He's able to produce around 200 units per week and he already started working on them, which means we should receive the first batch at the end of this week, uh, which is the first week of November 2025. I love how things kind of sorted themselves out in this regard, but the enclosure now being solid does have a bug. Well, it's not a bug, it's a usability issue that the final version that you will receive won't have 
And I will not disclose it until this fix or the fix for this issue arrives. It's somewhat unconventional, the fix I mean, even janky some might say, but it works and I love it. Make sure to subscribe because I can't wait to show it to you. And if someone figures out what the problem is before my next video on the topic, please leave a comment below and I'll pin it for everyone to see how observant of a person you are. Anyway, the next part of the enclosure is this polycarbonate cover. Of all the things I'm showing you today, this one will actually differ from the final version the most and I think it's pretty obvious why. This massive hole for the fan isn't exactly a best practice when it comes to, well, safety. Though I must admit it has somewhat grown on me over the past couple of days that I've been working on this unit, right? The reason for this hole is the fact that I asked my friend, who's manufacturing the enclosures, to also make me a handful of plastic covers while we wait for the final ones to arrive. And the final ones are going to be made by PCBWay. In fact, they are already being made by PCBWay, which have also been the channel's sponsor for quite a while now, as you probably noticed. These will, of course, have a proper fan cover, but as you can see in these photos, it does increase the complexity of the part somewhat, which in turn means more milling time, and for these handful of units, we just didn't want to bother. So, we decided to just cut out the hole, because I'd rather the CNC time is used for the production of the final bottom parts, rather than prototyping the covers, right? Overall, I'm super happy how it turned out, and for this round of 1000 units, the price difference is, well, negligible. I mean our price difference, that is how much we will pay for, for the production of the routers, because nothing changes for you. I promised this device will cost $600, and I intend to keep that promise, despite the fact that we're coming dangerously close to the actual production costs being also $600 per unit. That said, if for some reason these development kits get received amazingly and there's demand for another run, we will do it, of course, because it will be foolish not to, but in that case we will have enough time to develop molds for injection molding, which means that these 1000 units are a one-off thing with their aluminium enclosures and you won't be able to get them once this run is over, right? Before we move on, I also need to talk about these four holes on each side. And if you were wondering if these are for rack ears, then the answer is yes. But I have to disappoint you a little. You see, during the anodization, we discovered these holes are a massive pain in the butt because the dye sometimes runs out a little, leaving, the, leaving this mark or stain on the surface, which of course makes it look somewhat unprofessional. We did try plugging them. In fact, they have been plugged on this very unit, which is why you can see the gray aluminum inside. But in this case, the anodization becomes significantly more expensive because someone has to plug all eight of them by hand, right? So we decided we're still going to give you threaded holes for your own 3D printing experimentation, but we're instead going to put them on the bottom of the device, one on each corner, and that will hopefully please all you <laughs> rack nerds out there. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. When I developed my custom mechanical keyboard, PCBWay manufactured both the prototypes as well as the production PCBs and the quality was nothing short of exceptional. So, for our router project, I knew exactly who to turn to. They've produced prototypes for us throughout this entire journey, like the M.2 fit test cards, CNC milled plastic and aluminum enclosures, and even some parts for the final production units. PCBWay offers everything from PCB manufacturing to 3D printing, injection molding and even sheet metal fabrication. Check them out using the link in the description. Of course, every device that sits on a desk or a shelf needs feet, and ours is obviously no different. These are cut to size in Hungary by the same company that manufactured feet for my custom mechanical keyboards, and I was very happy with them way back when, so I figured, why change something you're happy with, right? They already come pre-applied with double-sided adhesive, so all we have to do is remove the protective layer and stick them to the enclosures. The part that's missing here, or should I say the reason for this cutout on the foot, is the custom sticker that's going to be printed for each unit individually. You've seen these stickers on countless products before, not just electronic ones, and in our case, um, these stickers will have the serial number printed out on them, along with the five MAC addresses that will also be unique to each device. 
Since each of these stickers is unique, we obviously can't just order them in bulk, right? We need to print them at the assembly time, which is why it's our EMS company that will provide the printer that's intended for this purpose. As usually, I'll of course show you everything once we get to that point, so click that subscribe button because it's not every day that you see how custom product stickers get printed. I won't talk about the PCB itself in this video because I think we covered it more than enough in my previous one. So if you missed it, I'll leave a link to the description down below. What I do want to talk about on the other hand are the next steps. So firmware is pretty much done and we're currently focusing on two things. First, we want to make sure that everything does in fact arrive on time so that the pick and place company can start producing the PCBs. The way that they normally do these things is they take all 1000 uh, boards, which are empty by that point, populate them with parts on one side and then populate them with parts on the other side. However, we ask them if they can do four units first, both top and bottom, so that we can test them thoroughly right there and then in their facilities before we give them the green light for the rest of 996 ones. We'll have to pay for the additional machine preparations because of this, of course, but we're talking around $1,000 here, which may sound a lot, but think of it as an insurance. It's better to catch a bug before we manufacture a thousand units that combined costs, what, almost $500,000, rather than after, right? We don't expect to find anything really, but better to be safe than sorry. I mean, we've spent more than a year and a half developing these, so one final checkup before we give them the green light can't hurt. And second, we've received quotes for a test jig, and let's just say it doesn't come cheap. Well, unless you consider $22,000 cheap, which I personally, definite, personally, personally, definitely don't. So we came up with an alternative plan, self-tests. We're still developing the full procedure for this. And once done, I will, of course, make a dedicated video specifically about this. But in a nutshell, it'll look something like this. First, you'll take an empty PCB and plug all the necessary cables in. So JTAG, UART, USB, all the networking cables, and finally the power cable. All these will be controlled by a Zima board, which for all intents and purposes is an x86 equivalent of a Raspberry Pi. With everything connected, the plan is to scan one of the data matrix stickers on the PCB, and with one of those, you know, beep scanners or whatever they're called. And this will trigger the fully automated programming of the NOR chip with firmware, the EEPROM chip with MAC addresses and the serial number, and rebooting the board into the final operating system that all of them will ship with. That's all I'm going to say on the topic, because as I said, there's going to be a dedicated video just about this, but we need another 10 to 14 days to wrap up this software that we're writing for this purpose, which is written in Python, if you're curious. Now, before we wrap this video up, I have to show you something funny. I've received several emails from my subscribers over the past couple of weeks, all pointing me to this AliExpress listing. To be clear, this is not us. I have no idea who this is, but the picture used in this listing are mine. That said, I think my time is better spent elsewhere, so for the time being, I don't plan doing anything about it, really. And even if I did have the time, I doubt I'd achieve anything of significance. So I'll just quote Oscar Wilde here. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery that mediocrity can pay to greatness. Which brings me to NVIDIA of all companies. If you follow the AI trends these days, which to be honest is almost impossible not to, then you already know that a couple of weeks they released their home AI device called the DGI Spark, DGX Spark. And while watching a couple of review videos here on YouTube, I noticed something curious. The bottom of their device looks surprisingly similar to something I've seen before. Actually, it looks surprisingly similar to something I've done before. I recorded the clip you're watching on 5th of February this year, and in the accompanying YouTube video, I described our plans for the founder's edition of our router, which included a magnetically attached foot with a hole to accommodate the two M.2 cards. Coincidence? I'll let you be the judge of that. For once in the past, what, almost 20 months, things are going as planned and there are no major unknowns left, which makes me incredibly happy. The router not only works, but it also looks absolutely fantastic. 
The majority of components have already been delivered or are well on their way, and as it currently stands, we should be able to start shipping the first units in December. We couldn't have done this without your support, so again, thank you for watching my videos, thank you for pre-ordering, and most of all, thank you for believing in us. This device is in front of me because of you, and I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity that all of you have given us. Again, thank you. Tomasz from Slovenia, signing out.